Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. So in this video we are going to go over how to update the firmware on your 3D printer. Now I know there's a lot of different makes and models of boards, of printers, different versions. You don't have to worry about this video not applying to yours, even though I will specify the tutorial on the Ender 3, the process is the same for pretty much any board. Just, I guess, maybe in the way you deliver the code would be different. So let's get to it. Don't worry about needing programming experience or needing to be an intermediate or needing any kind of tech knowledge. All you need to do is have a screwdriver ready that fits the screws to um, access your controller board on the printer and a little plastic shim tool. But yeah, let's get into it. Step number one, you are going to need to know your printer's controller board model or brand, as well as the version number. And they are usually like the largest text on the controller board. And what you would basically do is disassemble the um, section that has like the, the circuit board part of the printer. You're going to lift off whatever panel to access that board. Look at the model, look at the version. And um, if you have heat sinks on the circuit board, you're going to need to remove the heat sink lightly with a plastic tool. So plastic doesn't scratch other plastics usually, whereas metal woods, so you don't want to use like a screwdriver. Okay. So moving on, you're going to, I'm just going to show you. Okay, so now that we're looking at the board, this is Creality's board. They have, um, it's version 4.2.2. This big square, that is the MCU or the CPU of the board. It's like the main brain of the board. And then these four squares that you see here, these are all heat sinks that cover the driver. I already removed this one, but underneath it and the bubblegum looking stuff is the thermal paste. You don't want to scrape it too hard because you want to be able to read the words that are on the chip. So just scrape it enough to read the letters so you can see the make of that chip. Mine, unfortunately, is one of those loud ones that Creality is known to have, um, but it's, it's fine. Anyway, so you'll document any text on this chip right here, as well as the main CPU chip, and then this brand here, the board and the version number. Don't mess with anything else on the board. Um, and you can place the heat sink back on. I don't have any more thermal paste, but it's fine. So go ahead and download Visual Studio Code, not Visual Studio, but just Visual Studio Code. Um, that's Microsoft's free little software IDE. You're like downloading an IDE and its plugin for Marlin. Just click the extensions icon, type in auto build Marlin, and it's this green icon here. Once you've downloaded Visual Studio Code, then we are ready to move on to the next step, number three, which is downloading Marlin. Type in marlinfw.org, click the blue download Marlin 2.1 icon. You're gonna click 2.1 zip, open or decompress the zip, and then open Visual Studio Code, click open, go to downloads, and we're gonna open the file we just unzipped, Marlin 2.1. I guess I can trust them. Click the M icon and then click show ABM panel on the left. And this is the wrong board information. We don't need these. Now, that is only half of the code that you need. The other half or the second part of the code is going to be the config file, which is going to not be on marlin.com but it, or org. It's going to be on GitHub. And actually, um, you can find that out by going to the Marlin package that you downloaded, opening it up, looking at the config file, and it'll say, 
where have all the configurations gone? <laughs> no worries, just click that link here in the readme file. It'll automatically take you to the GitHub page where you'll download the config file, unzip the file, and then when you open it, click config, examples, and then find your board. Mine's Creality, Ender 3. You can see all the different printers here. And then Creality version 4.2.2. Copy all of these all four files, everything in this folder, copy them. And we're gonna place them in the Marlin folder, the Marlin main folder, not Marlin config folder, Marlin. And then just paste four items. It'll say file names are the same, just replace them. We are going to paste over the ones that were already here. And that brings us to our new correct board information. Now let's go ahead and jump into the code and then I will show you from there how to compile it and then stick it on an SD card. So this part is optional, but you're gonna type in configuration.h or open up the file and we are going to find, type control F and we're gonna search in the text define custom machine to find the function to uncomment so that we can give our machine a name. I'm going to change this to Rita's 3D printer or printer. <laughs> and you don't have to do this. Um, next, define S curve. Now, this is really neat. It just makes the moves in the stepper motor smoother. You just remove the two forward slashes and it'll activate the function. You'll want to uncomment define individual axes or axes homing. <laughs> And lastly, you're going to type in your printer driver or stepper motor drivers and then replace these. Make sure these are correct. Your stepper motor driver should be accurate. And you are all set. So going back to the auto build Marlin section, you're going to click the build button next to the information that matches your chip or board or chip and board and give it about two minutes and then it'll generate a file underneath it. You'll just click it and this is the file you're going to drag and drop onto your SD card. Now, when you do this, make sure that it is the only thing on your SD card because I'm not sure if it'll recognize it or not, but it's best to make sure that the file is on an empty SD card and there are no other files on the card. So what you're going to do once you finally compile the code is you are going to take your SD card, put it in the little USB thing, um, plug this into your computer. You will drag and drop the file onto the SD card from your computer and then take the SD card, plug it into your printer, um, turn it on and it'll ask you, I guess it's, I'm not sure if it's a glitch. It kind of seems like a glitch because it asks twice. New format detected, are you sure you want to override or something? You just hit yes, agree, install, um, and it'll install. And then you can turn it off, turn it back on, and it should load with your custom bitmap if that's what you chose, or the whole new firmware menu should be on your display, so. Okay, so I thought it was important to go over specific to Ender 3 Creality printers. Why Creality.com isn't the best place to download firmware and software from because they don't, um, you're not able to customize the code in a way that you can if you were to go this method. There's, it's not a cut and dry thing. Like each printer has different sensors, different like BL Touch, um, which is like the auto auto leveling device. Not every printer has that. Not everyone should have the software downloaded on their printer as if they have the sensor. Um, it could like interfere with other things. If you don't have a sensor on your printer, you shouldn't have code that is looking for it. And um, it could slow down the, the overall functionality of the printer's CPU or MPU. So you want to make sure that your firmware that you're going to be putting on your printer or installing is only specific as possible to the board you have. So it's better to go ahead and edit the code yourself. That way you know which functions you want your printer to have. Basically trim 
the fat um, and make your printer CPU as efficient as possible. So a couple things that I've noticed is that when I preheat my PLA on my printer after installing the latest firmware, I noticed that the bed and the nozzle both heat up to 200 degrees Celsius and the um, temperatures do not decrease after printing something and there's no way that I've seen to turn off that so um, I have to turn off my printer and then turn it back on to basically restart it but if you preheat the PLA it actually does not um, it will not adapt the temperature settings to the settings that you have in the print file so if you need your bed to be 50, 60 degrees Celsius, and you printed that after the PLA was preheated, it will not decrease the temperature and it will melt and it will curl the prints from the bed and it's just really, really hot. So don't preheat before you print anything. Um, I'm gonna fix that in the code somehow. I'm gonna just figure that out, but it won't be today or anytime soon. Um, yeah, I'll probably have an update for that. But anyways, so that's just something I noticed. Um, I would love to hear if, you know what you guys Guys have to say about that so anyways thank you guys for watching I would love to hear your feedback like comment and subscribe and get that cute little firmware update going and have fun bye